What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about some of my favorite apps on both my iPad and my laptop that I've basically used throughout university and also talk a bit about how I use these apps as a student. I know that the school year is pretty much over for college students, but now that I'm done with exams and school for good, I wanted to make a video to share some of these favorite apps so they might come in handy for you, whether you're going back to high school, middle school, college, or whatever else in the fall. If you're new to the channel and interested in seeing more student or technology related videos, be sure to subscribe and turn on bell notifications so you don't miss out on future uploads. Starting off with my most essential app for school, it's going to be Microsoft OneNote. This app basically turns your iPad or laptop into an organized and infinitely sized notebook, and the app is also completely free. I do both handwritten notes on my iPad and type notes on my laptop for OneNote, but most of the time I just export lecture slides onto OneNote and then make notes on top of them. I also started to do all my handwritten assignments, problem sets, and tutorial questions on OneNote pages because I find that I write a lot neater on the iPad than on paper. Before I used my iPad with OneNote, I would literally burn through Muji notebooks every single semester. And even though I enjoyed making these notes, it definitely wasn't very efficient. And I also spent a lot of money on buying new notebooks and pens all the time. This past year though, I've taken almost all of my notes on OneNote and all of my courses are organized within OneDrive. So it's made it a lot easier to go back and review, which was something that I struggled with when I used paper notes. The main reasons I use OneNote over Notability and GoodNotes is for its organizational features and cross-platform compatibility. But there are also a ton of other features that I cover in more detail in my Why I Use OneNote video that I'll link on the screen and in the description below. So if you wanna learn more about why I use OneNote or my complete note-taking process, be sure to watch the other video I linked after this video. The next app I wanna talk about is what I use for scheduling classes and events during the school year and that's the Microsoft Outlook app as well as the Apple Calendar app. But both of them are synced on my iPad, so the reminders and events are the same on both apps. So I started using Outlook because my university's email provider is Outlook, and that's also what most of my jobs have used, so I've just gotten used to it over time. But honestly, all of the main calendar apps like Google Calendar or Woven are pretty much the same. There are definitely some more advanced features on some of the paid third-party calendar apps, but I found that Outlook does everything I needed to do from a calendar app, and I've used it throughout university. So I mainly use my calendar apps for classes and events that I have to remember and less so for actually organizing my time on a day-to-day -day basis and that might be why I don't need some of the more advanced features found on the other apps. So at the beginning of the semester I add all of my weekly class times and locations on my calendar so I don't forget them and when I get my syllabi for my classes I try to add all the important assignment and test due dates so I can always look back and glance at my calendar throughout the semester to see how much work I have coming up. Another big reason I use Outlook is because I set up a lot of meeting invites or coffee chats through my school email and having them all in one place makes it a lot easier to schedule. This is especially true if people are always changing the meeting dates later on as Outlook automatically updates this within your calendar so you don't have to worry about scheduling conflicts. Overall, there's nothing super unique about the Outlook calendar. I just like how it's free, integrated with my emails and super easy to learn and use. So definitely give it a try if you are looking for a simple calendar app. Moving on to the third app I wanted to talk about, it's actually from the sponsor of today's video and that's Wondershare with their PDF Element app. While they are sponsoring this video, I've personally used the PDF Element app for about two months now and it's basically an all-in-one PDF viewer and editor. So think of it as a more user-friendly version of Adobe Acrobat Pro. The app comes with a ton of features from editing PDFs directly as if they were Microsoft Word files to an OCR feature that converts your photo PDFs into text that you can search and edit. So I have the app on both my laptop and my iPad as my default PDF viewer. On my laptop, I mainly use the app for exporting PDF lecture slides to OneNote, as well as making notes directly on my PDF textbook files. And on the iPad, the app has all of the same features plus Apple Pencil support. So something I've used a lot this past month is filling in and signing PDF forms since I've moved into this new apartment. Overall, the app is just really intuitive and easy to use compared with the Adobe Acrobat Reader and comes with a lot of features that would have been super useful for me as a student going through university, like combining PDF files, compressing file sizes, and more. As with all the apps I've talked about, the download links are in the description below. And if you are interested in buying the pro version of the app, be sure to use the promo link in the description for 50% off. 
So next up on the list is Notion. By now, I think most students have heard of or already used the Notion app themselves. Notion is basically a free productivity app that comes with a ton of features from note-taking to making to-do lists to managing tasks and projects. Again, I won't go into all of the features of Notion since I probably haven't learned to use all of them yet myself, but let me know if a full Notion video or tutorial on how I use it is something that you'd be interested in seeing. So I don't use Notion for note-taking, but I do use it for video scripting and managing all of my projects. So mostly work I do on my laptop and computers. So I use this to create sort of a Kanban board table for organizing my video ideas. And then I apply a pre-made template that makes it really easy to storyboard and organize for future videos. I've also started using Notion more to organize things in my personal life. So for example, creating a shopping list and checking things off for my PC build, as well as a shopping list for moving into this new apartment. Again, with most apps on this list, Notion is cross-platform compatible, so I have it on both my iPad and my laptop and also my iPhone. Overall, the app is just really powerful and comes with a lot of features for organizing things, even if you didn't want to use it for note-taking. I also like how the app is super clean looking and only takes a few minutes to get the hang of and then it becomes super intuitive. So the last main app I wanted to talk about is this app called Forest. This is a super simple productivity app that helps you stay focused on whatever task you're doing. So how this app works is whenever you want to stay focused, you plant a tree with a set timer ranging from 10 minutes to two hours within the app. And basically the tree grows while you're working, but it dies if you exit the app. So it gives you that incentive to stay focused and motivation to not procrastinate or get distracted. After your timer ends and you successfully grow a tree, you get some in-game coins, which can then be used to purchase new trees and plants to fill up your forest with, which again adds to that gaming experience while you're doing work. So overall, I just think it makes studying a bit more interesting than it usually is. I also find that the app helps me section off my longer study sessions into 45 minute to one hour blocks. So I know that once a tree finishes growing, I can take a short break before planting another one and getting into studying again. I usually use this app on my phone, but it's also available on iPads and laptops, which is what I'm showing you here. The premium version of this app costs around $2, so it's super cheap and you don't get any more annoying ads bothering you. So if you are interested in trying out this app to stay focused, be sure to download it with the link in my description below so I get some extra coins when you download it. So those are the main apps I wanted to talk about today, but of course I use a lot of other apps on my iPad for school and I wanted to mention a few of the ones that I use less often, but pretty briefly in this video. So the first one here is Microsoft Math Solver. A lot of you probably know that the iPad doesn't have a built-in calculator app and for some reason you have to download a third-party one. I tried a bunch of them and almost all of them are either laggy or look ugly or have a bunch of ads unless you pay a premium price, which seems pretty ridiculous for a calculator app. So instead I use Microsoft Math Solver, which is a math problem solving app that has all the basic scientific calculator functions, but also a bunch of other features for solving math problems, like scanning your questions or handwriting them directly on the iPad. Next up is a drawing or sketching app, which is probably essential to a lot of iPad users, but I'm not that into drawing, so I personally don't do that for fun. The one drawing app I do have is Autodesk Sketchbook, and I use this for designing my YouTube thumbnails. Well, honestly, I'd probably be able to do the same thumbnails on any other sketching app. I just picked the first one that I saw for free in the App Store and it's worked out pretty well since. But that's it for all of the apps I wanted to talk about today. Honestly, I didn't know if I was really qualified to make this video because I just used a very small number of apps that I found to work for me. So be sure to let me know in the comments if I am missing some super useful student app that you would like to share with others. Also, I haven't uploaded much recently because I was busy finishing up finals and also moving into this new apartment. But now that the summer started and I'm settled in, I'll definitely try and post more consistently. Thanks again for watching and be sure to drop a like if you found this video somewhat helpful or entertaining. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cold heart, she ain't with it. Hard to love again and I get it. Time and time she tried to deal with it. But fuck boys, fuck it up for real niggas, yeah.